podcast. Um, the, the title of my talk today is you're better off making no calls. I don't know if you've read The Ultimate Sales Machine, but it's a, it's, it's a book by a guy named um, Chet Holmes. And in that book, he talks about how you really have to make 13 attempts to get the sale, right? It, it takes 13 tries to get a yes. Um, I was doing some research and in, in, in some of the other stats, you know, really they, they range, right? I think the least I found was eight attempts just to get them on the phone, right? Ne never mind get an appointment, but it was somewhere between eight and 15 tries. But here's the bottom line, right? You, you can't just try once and expect that everything is going to change. Um, and be, before we even get into like, what well, we know the definition of connections and all that kind of stuff, um, we're talking about the phone, right? Yes, in-person is better than, than the telephone, I get it, but in-person is not scalable. So, so what we do is we add in-person when we talk about geographic farming, but it's in addition to mail and it's addition in addition to phone calls and circle dialing and that kind of stuff. The bottom line is it's about the phone because because the phone is better than any other prospect it, it's the it's the data like we have to follow the data here okay like i know there's a lot of opinions out there i'm not going to give you my opinion i'm just going to give you the data 93 percent of the sales happen as a result of conversation on the phone okay so so time value efficacy phone no not text not not facebook okay not, not uh, you know, uh, uh, slide dial or any of those other things. They're all great tools. The thing is the phone. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to give you 10 tips to making the absolute most out of your prospecting time. So here we go, right? Uh, number one, uh, don't take this the wrong way, right? Uh, uh, you got to stop whining. I, it, the phone is your friend. It is our job. Um, if you don't like the phone, if you don't want to make phone calls, my, might I suggest just find a different profession. Um, it, it's like a fisherman complaining about the smell of fish, right? Like that just doesn't work. So we got to get past that, right? So number one, stop whining. It's part of our job. Like it or not, learn to like it, right? Number two, schedule. If it's not on your calendar, it does not happen. Period. End of story. That's both good and bad. Um, so, so you know, we talked uh, probably last week about how, hey, listen, schedule it eight to ten. Like this is all we do. For 10 minutes, I role play, role play, role play. And then for an hour and 50 minutes, I call, call, call. Number three, your environment matters. Um, if you like it bright, make sure your environment is bright. If you like it dark, make sure it's dark. If you like it quiet, make sure it's quiet. Like Figure out what works for you. Do you need music? It, whatever it is, but make sure that your environment is what you want it to be so that you don't have the distractions, okay? Um, we've got some we've got some fellas uh, up on the second floor in Grand Junction, the ISAs. They are doing this right now as we speak. Um, you can see the energy. They, they've got their their spot. They've got their desk. They've got it the way they want it. They're looking outside. Uh, for me, I have to be standing up. I got to be walking around. As, as you can tell, I'm a hand talker. Right. So I've got to be able. That means I've got to have a headset because I need to be able to do this. Make sure that you are you, your, your environment is correct. All right. Uh, number four, practice. Whatever emotion you feel when you're talking about practice, you, you, you've got to get through it. OK, I, I'm just going to say that because the truth is that pros practice, period. Right. Like, I mean, we hear all the stories when I think about basketball because it's basketball season right now. But, you know, Jordan and Kobe and first in, last out and all the funny deals. But the bottom line is pros practice. So practice. Nick Saban, that's the quote that I gave you guys the other day, right? We don't practice until we get it right. We practice until we can't get it wrong, period, end of story. So you got to practice. Number five, physical state. Um, I love how Tony Robbins talks about this. If you want to change your emotion, change your physical state. That's, you know, you see the, you know, him, he's jumping up and down and, you know, he's got a big smile. But here's the bottom line. When I'm walking and talking, the conversation sounds different. OK, when I'm smiling, right, one of the reasons they tell you, if you're a telemarketer, have a mirror so that you can see yourself, so you can see yourself smiling. It comes through in 
on the other side of the uh, of the phone based on what you're doing on this other side. So, so make sure that your physical state is where it needs to be. Number six, eliminate all the likely roadblocks. Listen, we all know what the basics are, right? I got to go to the bathroom. I got to get a snack. I got to get some water. Oh my gosh, Facebook. Oh gosh, I just got this phone call. Oh my gosh, I got a notification. Oh, did you hear that ding, ding? I, and I can hear it sometimes when I'm having a Zoom call, if you can imagine, right? With, with somebody else and you keep hearing the ding, ding, ding. Oh my goodness. Can you imagine? Turn off the notifications. Um, I, w one of the best pieces of advice that I've ever heard was somebody that said, I don't take phone calls during my prospect time. I make phone calls during my prospect time. Brilliant, right? Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Um, number seven, have a partner. Have a partner. Um, we have several of you in our organization that are doing this right now, having that accountability partner. And there's some funny Funny bets going on, y'all. So have some fun with that. Uh, we've got some folks down in Durango that are like saying, hey, listen, if you don't make your calls, I'm going to donate $100 in your name to this cause, which they, you know, absolutely hate. Like, I love it. We've had people, uh, you know, uh, use eating a can of cat food on stage at Gen Blue. Like, we've got some pretty funny stories. But having an accountability partner is really great. Now, here's the thing, right? Number one, take it seriously, right? Their time is valuable too. Uh, give more than you take. And then of course, uh, make sure it's somebody that you don't wanna let down, right? Because there are gonna be times when it's hard and you're not gonna wanna make those phone calls during that two hour period. Great opportunity to, to leverage your accountability partner. All right, uh, number eight, track it. How many phone calls? How many appointments? Uh, uh, I, I'm going I'm to touch a little bit more on that here in just one second, but you got to make sure you're tracking. And I really mean track. How many dials did you make before you actually reach somebody? Okay. How many calls did you make in one hour? Um, how many people did you get in touch with in that hour? How many appointments, right? You, you, you'll see. So now we have to measure it, right? And, and if you don't learn from the information, then, then why would we even track it, right? So, so number eight was track. Number nine, make sure that you measure it, right? Try a script for one week the data will tell you whether or not it worked, right? Track the numbers of appointments. Determine if you're, if you're, if you're going uh, uh, on uh, enough calls, enough appointments to get the listings. Like when we're taking all of this information, it gives us the data. We should be able to say, hey, listen, it takes me, uh, I can make 25 phone calls in one hour. It takes me 22 phone calls to, to get a hold of somebody or two people. It takes me, uh, uh, each hour I can make three appointments. Uh, every three appointments, I get one listing. You follow what I'm saying? So we can actually use the data. Folks, we are professionals. We are entrepreneurs. It is our obligation. It's our responsibility to run our businesses like that. Okay. And number 10, I want to talk to you about your prospecting list. And I get into the weeds here for a second. So you may want to rewind this. If you're watching this recording, if you're watching this live, go back. It'll be on uh, Facebook here shortly or Instagram here shortly, but, but walk through this with me, right? Your prospect list has to be large enough to fill the calls to close re requirement. The call to close requirement is that ratio, right? But it needs to be small enough so that you can, you can reach the, the call quota, let's call it. Okay. So, so it, remember we started this whole thing off saying, Hey, listen, if it takes 10 calls to get one appointment, all right, just work with me. 10 calls. This is a, this is a hypothetical. If it takes 10 calls to make one appointment and four appointments to get one sale, your call to close ratio is 40 to one. Okay. 40 calls to one sale. Okay. And, and so your appointment to close ratio is four to one. So if your sales goals are based on annual numbers, then, then you can very easily do the math, right? I need 10 sales this year, which means 40 appointments, which means 400 phone calls. And, 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 and I if, I, if I have to call eight times to get an appointment, right? Think about that for a second, right? Now, at the, at the lowest, right, if I have to make eight attempts to get an appointment, then, then my prospect list needs to be at least 50 prospects for every 10 transactions, okay? And, and if, if there are 220 days in the work year, I need to call two prospects every single day to connect with them eight times per year, right? So we're using the data, we're using the math to determine exactly what needs to happen. Here's the great news. If you're tracking, 
and you're measuring, you have the data to be able to create this plan. And this is what we do for business plans. All right, so if you haven't done a business plan, make sure you reach out to your managing director. We'd love to help you with that. But it is in the science of this whole deal, right? Uh, in order for us to be able to do it. So, so make sure that your prospect list is there. Now, many of you are saying, hey, listen, I've got to do 50 calls, right? Or 50 sales. So you just simply do the math. It's five times that, okay? That would be connecting. By the way, when you're when I say call two prospects, that's connecting with two prospects, not making phone calls, not leaving messages, not sending text messages, not doing Facebook Messenger. It's actually speaking to, to two, right? This folks, it's our job. And, and if somebody along the way told you something different, told you that it didn't have to do with sales and it didn't have to do with prospecting, I, I, I'm sorry, uh, and I really am. Um, they, they told you wrong. We are sales professionals. We find our customers, we talk to our customers, and we serve our customers. There's no skipping any of these steps. It's the job that we have. I hope that helped you with the 10 steps to making better connections um, and engaging with your customers. Uh, as always, be distinctive. <laughs>